Breaking news. Is this the end of Apple's dominance? The iPhone could be overturned and that has huge implications for photography. Canon can't seem to make a global shutter, says rumors, but maybe Nikon can. There is good news for Canon users though. We have some leaked lenses coming up and in the Sony world, we have a preview of their next global shutter camera as well as some firmware updates that they've actually promised. I'll get to those stories and more. But first, I want to tell you about our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is where you start when you need a presence on the web. You no longer start at social media. That's unreliable. With squarespace.com slash Tony, you can get your own custom domain name, your own custom email addresses. You can appear at the top of search results because Squarespace makes websites for you. Everything is customized to match your specific style, to reach the people you want to reach and to make you and your work look fantastic. Everything starts at squarespace.com slash Tony, where you get a free trial, no credit card required. And when you love it, the coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Our top story is one of the biggest stories of the decade in tech. Apple is promising to support RCS by the end of 2024. RCS is rich communication services, and that's their version of iMessage, where you know how you can give like a thumbs up or a heart to a message. You can send videos and images, like things don't have to travel over the cellular SMS network. It can travel over Wi-Fi, which means your messages get sent faster. You can receive more rich communications. Until now, Apple has made all Android users what we call green text in the Apple world. And that ended up being a real mark of shame, especially among teenagers. This is key not only in communications, but in photography, because Apple's monopoly on iMessage has really held people back from switching to Android. Here's a leading indicator. 87% of teens use an iPhone. The reason isn't one of prestige, at least not entirely, but one of practicality. When an Android user joins a group chat, which is an extremely popular way to communicate with your friends and family, the entire group chat loses rich communications. So you can't easily send a heart or a thumbs up, or if it does, it comes across awkwardly. Some messages simply get lost or delayed. And I vouch for this from the first person because I switched to a Google Pixel 8. I switched to a Samsung S21 Ultra because I liked the camera phones better than the iPhone. But I ended up switching back to the iPhone because my messages were getting lost. I wasn't able to communicate. And ultimately the phone is a device for communications and photography is secondary. Well, by opening up RCS and integrating that into iMessage, those problems should ideally go away. And that means people like me who would rather use an Android phone will now have that opportunity to do so without majorly sacrificing our communications with our peers and coworkers. I'm still a little suspicious that this is gonna be like the evil genie's wish. <laughs> like we've been begging Apple to support RCS and I just feel like they're doing it with a maniacal laugh. Wish master, careful what you wish for. First, Apple's saying they'll do it by the end of 2024, which is more than a full year away to just connect to a system that has existed for many years. It, it's not that complex. They could roll it out rapidly if they really wanted to, but clearly they're making the announcement now and then dragging their feet. I also strongly suspect they won't want to give up their complete monopoly on iMessage and they'll probably integrate it in some lower tier fashion so that Android users are still a little bit excluded and held back a little bit. Petapixel is also reporting that Apple is going to stop using Sony sensors, or at least they'll start designing their own sensors in-house. I'm not quite sure whether it has an implication for Sony Imaging, who has made Apple iPhone sensors for the last decade, but obviously that's a big part of their business, and those economies of scale make all their sensor development more effective. In other Sony news, there's a bunch of new firmware updates. People have been really excited for A7S III and A1 updates, me specifically, because those are our two main cameras for video and stills. And I'm honestly super disappointed in the firmware updates. First, they're offering for the A1 and the A9 Mark III relay playback, which just means if you record sequentially to two cards, like you record to card one until it fills up and then record to card two, now when you play back, it doesn't always 
playback from one card, the specified card, it will automatically switch between them in the proper sequence, which is just how it always should have worked. That actually sounds like a bug. Anyway, they're going to be fixing that. They're also going to be adding breathing compensation to the Alpha 1 and the A7S 3 And if you're a video shooter and you are doing focus pulls like near to far, you'll notice that the focal length can actually change. They can fix it in software by kind of cropping in when it would go wider to keep it more equal. They're adding that feature and some people care about that. For the A7S 3 they're also adding DCI 4K, which is that 4K, which is a little more letterbox than the 16 by 9 and is used by more serious filmmakers. So I don't care about that, but some people do. And it'll be at 24P, which of course is the preferred frame rate for a lot of filmmakers. They're also adding some workflow improvements. If you're doing an FTP transfer, you'll be able to prioritize specific images at the top of the queue. There's IPTC workflow, which has to do with metadata and some organizations use it internally, but most of us don't. And then they're adding C2PA content credentials, which is interesting to mostly people who work at media companies like Reuters. These media organizations want their photographers to certify that an image has not been modified. It is genuine as captured by the camera. The A1, the A9 Mark III, and the A7S III should be able to save images with signed credentials so that you can verify that it's not AI generated and or otherwise edited. This kind of exists today, like a camera released it, but as far as I know, nobody's actually using it in the real world. I'd also love to see the updates that like Nikon has been pushing out in the Z9 and the Z8 have just added new functions. I would love to see some of that added in the A1, which is now growing kind of stale. But that's not what we got. A lot of you are doing shopping right now. So I want to show you just some Black Friday specials, just deals that I think are particularly favorable. The A7S II, full frame camera with a lens, Adorama is selling it for 998 bucks. So that's a pretty crazy deal. We'll use our links to get that deal. The Canon R6 Mark II is only $22.99. That's $200 off. We're filming this with the original R6 and I kind of want to upgrade. So maybe I'll get this one myself. The strobe that we use for all of our portraits, you see it in all of our videos. There's a huge sale, $431 off for a total of $699. Go to this link. It is an incredible flash that we have been using for many years. And finally, the A7 IV. It's like the dream camera for uh, so many photographers, but especially portrait, wedding, wildlife, sports. It's a hybrid camera that can do it all. Amazing video camera. It's $200 off. But that's the biggest discount I've ever seen. So it's under $2,500 now, but rush to get that before the sale ends or they run out of stock. And you can see all of Adorama's specials at this link here. Next from Canon Rumors, a bunch of new rumored lenses. The one they're most confident about is a 400 millimeter F4 DOISL, which is a professional sports prime lens, like very telephoto. I have no doubt about this. The Olympics are coming out. The camera manufacturers are pushing out all their big sports telephotos as fast as they can. This would be a lighter and less expensive version than the existing Canon 400 millimeter F2.8. There's also some controversy about long rumored prime lenses for the RF system, the 14 F14, the 24 F14, the 28 F14, and the 35 F14. Sometimes they are rumored as a 35 F12. These have been rumored for more than a year. And they're still rumored. And I, I would never question it because, of course, Canon should be releasing a suite of day-to-day -day prime lenses in these focal lengths. It's weird that Canon has not yet released these, and yet these rumors have been around for more than a year and we haven't seen a single one of them. So the rumor pops up again, but Canon rumors is still skeptical because they haven't heard anything concrete. So I hope Canon does get on those soon. Now let's talk about Sony's next global shutter camera. Their first global shutter camera. Now let's talk about Sony's next global shutter camera. God. Man, it has been one of those days for me. I was just recording this with the Canon R6 and it overheated, which has never been a problem before. So I just had to pick up the R3 that I had sitting there and hooked it up. Anyway, some good news for Sony users. Sony is going to be launching a video centric camera with a global shutter. This is probably this, many of the same internals as the A9 Mark III, but repackaged in what Sony Alpha Rumors thinks is an FX9 body. That's like their big, heavy, expensive cinema camera. And these cinema people will really love a global shutter because it means when they do whip pans, you won't get any of those diagonal lines. They'll all just be vertical, which might actually seem weird since most of us have been seeing some amount of rolling shutter in cinema since the beginning of time. Anyway, here's the specs from Sony Alpha Rumors. Of course, the global shutter, 
full frame over sampling. So I'm gonna guess it's the same 24 megapixel sensor from the A9 Mark III that is going to be 6K in a video format down sampled to 4K, which just produces sharper 4K video, not unlike what I'm filming with here. It'll also be able to do 4K at 120 frames per second, but maybe with a crop. So it might be doing a one-to-one -one readout, which would be Super 35, which is pretty common format for cinema filmmakers. It'll also be able to do Super 35 at full HD, that's 1080p and 240 frames per second. So you'll be able to use it for some of your slow motion needs. Here's something surprising. They're suggesting it'll have more than 15 stops of dynamic range, but it's interesting because dynamic range is supposedly one of the challenges of making a global shutter camera. And Sony didn't allow any of us reviewers to test the raw files on the Sony A9 Mark III, so we don't actually have any information about the dynamic range or the high ISO performance. Rumors are also suggesting that this is going to be a dual gain sensor. And there were rumors saying the A9 Mark III was not a dual gain sensor. So maybe it's not the same sensor or maybe the rumor is just wrong, but it sounds like the base ISO would be 2000 and the higher gain ISO would be 6400. 2000 is a high base ISO, but I assume that this is with the 15 stops of dynamic range and maybe S log three. So you would definitely be getting lower ISO in those shadows. That's the good news. The bad news is Sony Alpha Rumors is also saying we're not going to see an A1 Mark II or an A7S Mark IV anytime soon. And again, those are my two main cameras, so I'm kind of bummed about that. For you Nikon users, good news. The Nikon Z9 and Z8 have been a huge, huge hit, but Nikon wants to take on the A9 Mark III by producing a higher performing but lower resolution version of this. Maybe this would be called a Z9H, sort of in parallel to Nikon's old D1H and D1X, where the D1H was a lower resolution but faster version of it. They're saying it would be about 24 megapixels. My own experience with the Z9 suggests that this could be really amazing. Now the Z9 struggled with autofocus performance really until their firmware 4.0, which has greatly improved it. But even with version 3.0, when I put it into its Super 35 APS-C mode where it crops down to about 20 megapixels, not only does the frame rate, I think, double, but the autofocus performance went through the roof. And to me, that said that the Z9 was struggling with autofocus mostly because it had to process so much data. It's 45 megapixels. But when you drop that amount of data, it was better than a Sony Alpha 1. Now, sports photographers don't really need 45 megapixels. So if you could get a full readout at 24 megapixels with the benefit of not having to process the entire sensor's data, this could be a really game-changing camera. <laughs> Sorry to keep using game-changing, but uh, I mean it. Another big question is if it's going to be a stacked sensor, which means really fast readout, but not zero millisecond readout, or a global sensor like the A9 Mark III, which has a true zero millisecond readout me. I don't care that much. I'm one of the few people in the world who shot the Nikon Z8 against the A9 Mark III, and I really did not find too much of a difference in the performance or the pictures when shooting at 120 frames per second. And I never saw any rolling shutter out of the Nikon or the A1 or the Canon R3 because they all have stacked sensors which read out fast, but the global shutter does seem to make some compromises like a higher base ISO that we know of and possibly less dynamic range and more noise at high ISO. And when faced with tiny amounts of rolling shutter or all those compromises, I, I would pick a stacked shutter for the Z9H, and I think that's probably what they'll give us because I don't know that Sony's willing to sell the global shutter just yet. Canon rumors are saying Canon cannot make global shutters just yet, and I do know that creating a global shutter is a massive engineering feat, and Sony is producing more camera sensors than anyone in the world, I believe, especially since they currently make iPhone sensors, so Sony might have economies of scale that Canon can't yet match. But again, I don't think in practice that's going to be a big deal for them. In the comments down below, let me know what you think. Should Canon put a lot of energy into global shutters or are they overrated? And don't forget to check out squarespace.com Tony to get a website built for you that you select with your branding, your colors, your fonts, your work art, your portraits, your landscapes, your movies, whatever it is you make, squarespace.com slash Tony is the place for creators to share their work. 
not on social media, but in your own domain name where you can be at the top of search results. You can get emails at yourdomainname.com instead of gmail.com or something else. Start today. When you do, you get a free trial. After you love it, the coupon code TONY will save you 10%. Thanks for sponsoring us, Squarespace. Bye.